Hi, this is a narrated presentation about the Traveling International Curated Exhibition, Paper Alchemy. I hope you enjoy learning more about it. Hello and welcome to Paper Alchemy, a curated international traveling exhibition. I'm James Thurman, the curator of the exhibition, and I'll be sharing some insights and thoughts about how the exhibition came to be. So Paper Alchemy contains more than 50 artworks by 45 different makers that all incorporate Thermonite, and it debuted at a venue in Istanbul, Turkey in June of 2021. Now you may be asking yourself, what is Thermonite? So Thermonite is a layered recycled paper composite where each layer of recycled paper is bonded together with a plant-based resin. I invented and perfected Thermonite and have made each piece by hand to distribute to anyone that is interested in working with it. And this is where it came from. So I wanna start with a drawing I made as a child that I still have. And I remember doing this drawing and, and I promise it'll relate to seeing how all this uh, Thermonite and work uh, sprung forth from it. But even as a child, I was kind of conflicted between the arts where most children are interested in, in drawing and painting and things. And so my mother, the archivist, sort of gave me this prompt of uh, what do I want to be when I grow up or what will I be 20 years from then? And so I was seven years old and I did this drawing. I still remember doing the parts of this drawing where on one side of the paper is my idea of an artist and you see the artist uh, painting a portrait outside in a bright sunny day. But I was also interested in the sciences. My father is a mechanical engineer and so had some influence there. And so I started drawing my idea of a scientist. And so you can see this little lab boot and, and coat starting to being drawn. But it didn't make sense on the, the, the scene with the artist. So I flipped the paper over and on the other side of the paper is uh, the, that scientist in the lab with the colored liquids and the beakers and the test tubes and such. And so later you'll see how these interests in the arts and sciences converged in, in my own creative practice. So let's skip ahead and I did end up pursuing a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in undergraduate and then uh, an MFA in metalsmithing from Cranbrook Academy of Art. And while I was pursuing this degree, I still sort of had multiple interests. And so even though I was in metalsmithing, I did combine those interests with, uh, with woodworking. And so I got interested in the woodworking as a way of making tools for the metal forming and metal spinning that I was doing. But it eventually ended up in the work. So I was always a person that was sort of putting together different ways of, of approaching things, different fields, different materials. And so in this work, I did start working with resin. And so you can see here resin as a way of uh, creating a surface finish on the wood pieces that I was making. So this is the kind of work that I was making when I got my MFA. And I was fortunate to get a full-time teaching position at Penn State University. And while I was there, I was sharing a studio with a printmaker and artist bookmaker and uh, we were approached about designing and making awards for an environmental design symposium. And so we wanted to make something that was recycled since it was about environmental concerns. And so we came up with this idea of making these, uh, these candlesticks where they would be awards, but then the, uh, the winners of the awards could actually use them. And what was funny about making these is as you cut into the books and made these different shapes that we bolted together, I noticed how the, the patterns of the text in the books created a wood grain of their own. And there was just something so intriguing about that because paper is made from wood and wood has a grain to it. And then these, these printed books had kind of a wood grain of their own again. And so it really got me thinking about the potential of the material. And so... I was thinking about how does this relate to the work that I was doing at the time, the work that I had I'd done for my MFA and I was continuing to pursue as a, as a professor. And so it made sense to me since I was doing all of these pieces on a lathe and doing these, these vessels and rotational forms, that it made sense to do the same with the paper. And so I started trying to play with different adhesives and gluing the paper together. And so, uh, 
gluing each sheet of paper together as a block of material and then putting it on a lathe and carving through it just like the blocks of wood that I was working with as well. And it was just so exciting to see this, this kind of printed wood grain re-emerging from the recycled pages. And even though I was a metalsmith and teaching metals classes, I just couldn't re resist the seduction of this material. And so if you look closely, you can see some of the layers of the text, and even it looks like some DNA coding or wood grain, depending on the different papers that I was working with. And so I just really took that kind of uh, scientist part of my mind and began experimenting. So changing variables, changing approaches, seeing what materials and adhesives would work, starting to play with different colored papers. And so this was my first piece uh, working with maps and uh, looking at all the different colors that would emerge from the maps and then how the different stripes of the materials would emerge from each layer of the paper. And going back to my metalsmithing and jewelry making background, starting small, working with smaller jewelry pieces. This is a, a small pendant and this is the reverse side of it. And what you might notice is the, the white that happens uh, between each layer. So most papers, the ink is only on the surface of the paper, and then the white that you see is actually the thickness of each sheet of paper as I'm cutting through it and uh, polishing and sanding through there. And so as I got more comfortable with the, the materials and, and uh, the paper, the different resins that I was working with, expanded the size and started doing these uh, kind of paper plate series and was continued to be just seduced by all the possibilities as I would uh, carve through these different papers. And lots of surprises would emerge through the process. I kind of knew how the pieces would turn out, but not exactly sure. And so depending on the different wood turning techniques I, would, I was using, the different papers I was using, each piece became a, its own interesting collage of, of patterns and textures. And then uh, sort of exploring different materials, sometimes keeping uh, the source book here, an old textbook on the human body. And you can see how the impact of, of how the book was printed would appear within the papers. And so some of the colors from the illustrations, some little bits of uh, the text, uh, and just humorously kind of naming them different paper plates based on, on when I was making them and uh, continuing to explore a range of different types of objects that I might be making. So again, scaling it back down, working with jewelry, sometimes working on a lathe, sometimes creating all of these by hand, and just seeing those details of the, the different printing dots, as well as uh, the different colors and textures that will emerge from each layer, and wanting to make pieces that people could actually use and, and uh, for example, this, this wearable ring. And many of the designs that I developed, I continue to produce. So these uh, money or dollar rings where they're small uh, strips of currency wrapped inside of a uh, sterling silver sleeve. So very durable, very wearable. Um, just like currency has a higher sort of cotton fiber content in it that makes it durable, it continues to be durable as a, a wearable piece of jewelry as well. And uh, some more playful pieces, these are some bangle bracelets that I still make occasionally. And all of the colors and patterns come from whatever papers I'm working with. So in this collection tends to be more uh, recycled construction paper where the paper is fully colored, whether it's black and white or, or the different colors that they sell. Uh, and some other pieces made from, from text and books and such. But uh, they're, they're very durable. It's sort of like working with a, a hardwood or uh, kind of a, a half wood, half plastic material. So they make great sounds when they knock together, when they're being worn and, and moving about in, in every day. And then of course, using it in one of a kind pieces, combining it with other materials. The Layered Synergy series is uh, a series of wearable uh, brooches that I made, combining it with Damascus or layered steel. And I thought the patterns that emerge within the steel made sense within the patterns that were emerging within the thermonite or the layered paper. And 
I was also approached about making sort of stones out of thermonite or small cabochons that jewelers could use into their own designs. And I developed uh, the layered energy series with that, where I would uh, make my own sort of thermonite stones and cabochons and combine them with, uh, with other jewelry designs. And then continuing with the lathe turn plate pieces, sometimes uh, making composites where I would laminate up uh, maps and books together, cut them back apart, put them back together, developing different types of patterns, uh, including different uh, laser etched imagery. In this case, where I was uh, using a series of different uh, inspirations for myself. So this using a motif inspired by Charles Rennie Macintosh that is laser etched around the edge of the plate. And then making some different stands for those plates. In this case, it's a fold form copper stand of the plate. Um, but these are different samples of different series using Thermonite that I've done in my own work over the years. Here you can see a detail of that, and you can still see little bits of the words that are printed on the maps or on the text. And I also developed a, a series of wearable and vessel pieces combining my different interests. So again, uh, like you've seen, my, my sense to kind of converge different ways of working. So my interest in making vessels, my interest in making jewelry, putting them together where this wearable pin or brooch has a home to live as the lid of the vessel when it's not being worn on clothing. And I thought that was a, a great solution to what do you do with jewelry when you're not wearing it besides just chucking it into a jewelry box. So it can still be seen and, and a, a beautiful uh, inspiration as well. And so at some point, you might have noticed that little little R in a circle. And so I did register the, the name of Thermonite as a way of, of having a name for the material that could be used easily. And the goal for that was so that other people could use the material and sort of tribute its source. Uh, but also, I wanted to kind of share that material with other people and see what other people would do with the material that would be different uh, from what how I would approach doing it. And so uh, my wife, Amit Demerguch Thurman, is also a metalsmith and jeweler. And we, over the years, have collaborated on different designs and different pieces. And she was actually the, the first person to collaborate with me on using Thermonite in other work. And so she does a lot of enameling. And so this was a piece that we did in 2013 for a, uh, a themed curated exhibition where I did the, the thermonite ring around an enameled component that she made. And this is a, a wearable ring, and this is the top view of that ring. And a, uh, a manufacturer of custom gaming dice became interested in the material, and they were uh, some of the first people to machine and laser etch Thermonite. And uh, that also, those kinds of explorations that other people do uh, continue to inspire uh, my own possibilities with my own work. And so thinking about how to get others to work with the pieces, I developed uh, this idea of a curated exhibition where I would invite other jewelers and metalsmiths that I knew to see if they would be willing to, to work with this crazy material. And uh, the original exhibition that we had back in Istanbul, there were uh, 13 people participating in that exhibition. And so I made pieces of Thermonite for them, uh, sent it to them, and then they uh, came up with their own designs and sent me back those pieces. And so these are uh, kind of the original 13. And then as we started sharing uh, results of that show and the pieces that people created, many other people got interested in it and said, oh, could I, could I join this exhibition? I would love to work with Thermonite. And so it really helped make my dream come true of other people uh, being creative with and, and using Thermonite in their own work. And so Paper Alchemy at its largest expanded to 45 different artists. And uh, over the, the years and, and different venues, different pieces have sold. Some people have been able to make uh, replacement pieces. Um, other pieces have, have just uh, sort of gone to, to private collectors. And so you can see the, the range of different approaches that people took. Um, 
like I said, mostly it was uh, jewelers and metalsmiths, but sometimes incorporating it with other materials, sometimes incorporating it with the photography that they did. Um, and I will just highlight uh, a few of the pieces that I think are really interesting. And so, like I mentioned, Amut was the, the first person to, uh, other than me, to work with Thermonite and incorporate it into her own piece. And so this earlier piece from 2013 uh, incorporated that uh, red and white and pink layered Thermonite there as the center of this lotus bloom wearable brooch that she created. And this was really the piece that uh, kind of germinated the idea for paper alchemy in giving the Thermonite to other makers and, and see what they would do with it. And so uh, Boris Bally, a great metalsmith and former teacher of mine who I worked as a studio assistant for for a couple years, uh, he created this piece, Aqueous Meditation, that was inspired by his regular fitness regime of uh, doing laps in a pool. And so the, uh, the sterling silver framing being the, the lines that he would see and doing those laps in the pool. And I think it, it's just a great way of, of looking at this particular piece of Thermonite and imagining it as waves in, in a pool as you're swimming. And uh, Harlem Butt, a well-known enamelist, uh, used Thermonite as a lid to the vessel and then let that original piece of Thermonite kind of inspire the colors and patterning within his layer vessel. And his is a great example where this piece sold from one of the venues and he was able to uh, make a replacement for it with a different piece of Thermonite. And so you can, again, see the uh, different inspirations for the colors and patterns that he's taking from that original Thermonite in, in the creation of his vessel. I love Andy Cooperman's piece where he really made this kind of referential to the source of the Thermonite. So thinking that most Thermonite is coming from atlases and books, and then he carved this kind of miniature wearable uh, necklace piece to go back to its source as a, a small book. Um, and I, I think that that was just a, such a creative and innovative approach to that. Uh, Dan DiCaprio, who incorporates a lot of wood carving into his own pieces, and he really, uh, if you're able to see this piece in person, able to carve deeply into the Thermonite and uh, approached it in ways that, that I've never personally done, and I just really love the, the resonance of the black and white piece of Thermonite to the, the darkness of the ebony wood that he, he paired it with. And Bob Ebendorf, well known for working with found objects and materials, uh, wanted me to just send him kind of finished components that he would play with and incorporate into other materials. And so uh, you can see here the black and white pebble of Thermonite paired with a twig from the forest for his piece, along with other uh, beads, metal, and, and jewelry components he had from his studio. Ted McDonough, who uh, does a lot of work with layered Damascus, created this chef knife's piece with his pattern welded steel and then using uh, what I love he called uh, Mapu Megane, a tribute to Mocha Megane, the Japanese layered metal technique, as the, uh, the handle scales for his knife piece. And Sandra Wilson, who had another black and white piece of Thermonite and uses a lot of environmental concerns in her own work, incorporated this 24 karat gold component that is made from uh, recycled electronic components that are including that gold. And so she's been using uh, those environmental concerns and approaches in her own work, and then combining that with the environmental aspects of Thermonite too. And then of course, my own piece that's included in the show, uh, I've been doing a series of pieces exploring the different deadly sins. And so this belt buckle is about uh, the deadly sin of greed. And so you can see uh, this sculpted pewter miniature that I've painted and then uh, paired with the Thermonite map. So if you think of, of treasure maps and then uh, this treasure here uh, being incorporated in with the, the map, the layered maps of the Thermonite. 
And these are the different venues so far that Paper Alchemy has traveled to and uh, different, it's expanded a lot from uh, the Istanbul venue to Radford University's venue. And then along the way, more people have become interested and we've added a piece here or there. And uh, there's lots more exhibitions to come. So just gonna keep it traveling as long as we possibly can. And here's some uh, views. Each venue has a different kind of uh, approach to the installation of Paper Alchemy. And sometimes I've sent additional pieces of my own to complement uh, the different creative pieces that people have made for Paper Alchemy. Uh, this was it when it visited the Lighthouse Art Center in Florida and at the University of Louisiana in Lafayette. And for more information about uh, Paper Alchemy or Thermonite or my own work, definitely uh, feel free to visit my website at jamesthurman.com or uh, you can follow me on YouTube. I'm regularly posting uh, mostly instructional videos about uh, metalworking, metal spinning, jewelry making, as well as uh, some other videos just like this one. And then uh, probably the thing I keep up with most is Instagram. And so try and post uh, my, my current events and things that I'm up to. So thank you very much for your interest in Paper Alchemy. And I hope uh, you've enjoyed learning more about the exhibition and all the great pieces included. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.